In today's video, we're investigating what square and cubic roots mean practically. When we extend the idea to more dimensions, we cannot present it visually anymore, but it helps to think about the basic practical concept when you come face to face with a root of significant power. If you like the videos, please subscribe, turn on notifications and leave a comment about your experience or what you'd like to see. Let's get going. Hello and welcome to the main course. Dish up some food for thought. How long does a piece of rope need to be for the length of the rope to be 2 meters? That's an easy question. The rope needs to be 2 meters long. If only all exams started off like this. But you will understand in the moment why I'm asking the question in this way. It's a simple scenario which will expand into more dimensions. If you haven't seen my video about addition, subtraction, multiplication and division in dimensions yet, feel free to have a look. It relates to what we're covering today. You can think of a straight line as an equilateral geometric shape in one dimension. It has only one side, so all its sides are equal, making it equilateral. My question can thus be asked alternatively as follows. What should the length of each side of a line be in order for the length of the line to be 2 meters? It is the same question, but expressed in mathematical terms. The answer to this question is the root of the problem. The term root, as it relates to equations, were used by Arabic mathematicians hundreds of years ago and became the widely accepted term. Think about it as the unknown starting point that led to the eventual situation that you are now aware of. In this case, it's a root in one dimension. If the side was, say, 3 meters long, the length of the line would be 3, and the same for 4. If we now extend this to two dimensions, the line becomes a square, which is an equilateral geometric shape in two dimensions. The length of the line now becomes the area of the square. We see that the square consists of four blocks of one square meter each, so the area is four square meters. The question now becomes, what should the length of each side of a square be in order for the area of the square to be four square meters? The answer is still two, and it's now a root in two dimensions, or a square root. The square root of four is therefore two. If the sides are three meters long, the area is nine square meters, since there are three rows of three blocks each. The square root of 9 is therefore 3. If the sides are 4 meters long, the area is 16 square meters, since there are four rows of four blocks each. The square root of 16 is therefore 4. And what about three dimensions? The square now becomes a cube, which is an equilateral geometric shape in three dimensions. The area of the square now becomes the volume of the cube, we see that the cube consists of 8 blocks of 1 cubic meter each, so its volume is 8 cubic meters. The question now becomes, what should the length of each side of a cube be in order for the volume of the cube to be 8 cubic meters? The answer is still 2, and it's now a root in 3 dimensions, or a cubic root. The cubic root of 8 is therefore 2. If the sides are 3 meters long, the volume is 27 cubic meters, since there are 3 levels of 3 rows of 3 blocks each. The cubic root of 27 is therefore 3. If the sides are 4 meters long, the volume is 64 cubic meters, since there are 4 levels of 4 rows of 4 blocks each. The cubic root of 64 is therefore 4. Note that, whatever the dimension, the root of 1 stays 1, since your shape will always be only one unit in size. The root of 0 is also always 0, since the sides should have no length in order for the geometric shape to have no measurements. Things become a bit more complex when we start working with negative roots and roots of negative numbers, but we will consider how negative numbers influence calculations in general in a future video. For now, we remain positive about mathematics for a while. 